Support for the dollop comes from RX Bar, a whole food protein bar made with 100% whole ingredients. These are awesome. They are. Awesome. You, yeah, we both got a box. I, but I've been a fan before the box. My oh, box you is were? already gone. Dude, I really do. You knew what they were before you got them? Yeah. Yeah. No, I ate them a lot on my last job. They have, um, well, they're super like healthy and protein filled. But and they, they also, they're also like, like they're made with like natural stuff. Yeah. They so, got and simple. They put all the ingredients right there whites, on the front. Dates, simple. Totally. Almonds, they just change it up. Um, real fruit. Yep. Spices. Yeah. Uh, cacao. So, are you about to hit me? Get your fucking hand away from my face. Uh, okay. And taste good, which you would, you surprisingly, yeah. uh, you would think healthy things. I keep them in my car, in my things, backpack. Okay. Healthy things often get a knock, but it tastes good. Tastes you good. you love them. Love them. Um, there's 11 different uh, delicious flavor varieties of which Gareth probably likes all. Gluten free, soy free, dairy free. Yep. Um, no added sugar, artificial flavors, preservatives. Uh, I. But they're real good if you dip them in nacho sauce. Um, I've been hiking a lot. I take them on hikes. Yeah. Uh, it's great when you get up to the top and you're just sitting there uh, thinking about how you might die. Uh, because you've worked out too hard. What? And then you eat a bar. And you, Don't and you promote run, these as suicide bars. And you run down what? and you trip on a rock and you see yourself falling face buddy, first buddy, into the buddy, rocks. Buddy, 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 buddy. Last minute, you buddy, roll buddy, off buddy, into the grass buddy, and a guy buddy, walks by buddy, and says, Are you buddy, okay? What the hell is happening? And you're face you. down. What are you talking about? And you don't look up and just you just read say, I'm what fine. they have there. Good Sorry. God. Uh, so they're great for like. Gareth had, will have them at the office, and yeah. I'll have them on hike. Yeah, I'll tell more about how you have them. Grab one on a plane. Bring it on a plane. What? Grab one uh, on a plane. Uh, they're great pre or post workout. Uh, just... Egg white protein stands out as a source of protein, so that's super easy for your body to absorb. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I push it through my arm sometimes. So obviously, Gareth, which one's your favorite one? Do you have a favorite? I like. They have like a chocolate sea salt, and then there is yeah, uh, blueberry too. I don't know. They're all really good. They're all uh, there's not. They're like. Similar, yeah. There's a lot of good ones. All right, yeah. Gareth. There's likes a pumpkin R- one. I think that's seasonal. RX I'm bar. in RX. For 25 percent off your first order, visit rxbar.com/dollop and enter promo code dollop at checkout. Gareth loves it. Thanks. Um, I'm also a big fan. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, you guys, uh, we want to say you're listening to the dollop. Wow. This is a bi-weekly American history podcast. Each week, I, tea drinker. I'm drinking tea, and you're not. Pizza eater. I had pizza before this, and you didn't. What? I had olive and pepperoni pizza. And, uh, and used to uh, be my favorite. Traffic sign obeyer. Uh, <laughs> Dave Anthony reads a story from American history to his friend. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Um, when I ate meat, that used to be my go-to, pepperoni black olive. Boom. Girl. Girl, we could have had some times back yeah. then. I mean. Um, we are also brought to you by Fab Fit Fun. Uh so uh if you're thinking about getting some for your lady for Valentine's Day, uh this is a great way to do it. Um Fab Fit Fun, uh they send you a, a box. Uh, Here's the move. Four times you order a year. the box and then you just buy like a little bag, like a gift bag, and you empty thing ev- everything from the box into the gift bag and just be like, <laughs> I picked it all out. <laughs> like if you want to get to that level of shadiness, you're av- you're able to. Um so they send it's just it's full of tons of stuff that is uh a n- name brand stuff. Like I said, that we, we got a poncho, we didn't my lady got a poncho, she got mascara, she got Stay to shader. I think they mark it uh, like a what, what, what sports do you think is sports in markings. No, I just saw no, the colors. No. There's not under eye blackening. <laughs> My wife's a quarterback <laughs> since she got the box. <laughs> uh, so it's full size products. It's not sample products. Um, they're 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 cutting edge stuff, as they say. Uh, it's the great value. Um, Honey, I'm auditioning for the Falcons later. The cost of the box is you get like two hundred bucks worth of stuff or something. Like it's pretty crazy. They don't repeat. Uh, uh, boxes. Uh, it's products in the box each time they send you a new box. Yep. Uh, it's seasonal, so you know it's great. Um, uh, you love fashion stuff and beauty and home and fitness. My and mother got products. my mother left yesterday, and when she was getting like when she was leaving, she was so excited about the poncho. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, four times a year. It's four forty nine ninety nine a box. Uh, so uh, jump on board. Uh, Fab Fit Fun. Uh, it's fabfitfun.com. 
So uh, used to be your website. We just got yeah. Well, I gave it to him. We just got uh, our Fab Fit Fun boxes. Uh, our ladies loved it. In my case, my wife. In his case, his uh, mom. Oh boy. Uh, go use so wait, wait. our code to get ten dollars off your Am first. Am I at my peak of sadness? Yep. First box. Try Fab Fit. Am I pa- Fun. Is this how you realize you're pathetic? Someone just mentions it in an ad. I gave some to my beautiful wife and family, and you to your mom who was visiting. <laughs> So, <laughs> go to fabfit2fun.com to subscribe and start getting uh, the box for a. Do they send women to your home? Life well lived. Use promo code Dollop to get ten dollars off your first box. That's products. Do we valued. have a matchmaking sponsor? That's products valued at two hundred dollars for only thirty nine ninety nine. Again, go to fabfitfun.com and use code Dollop. Am to I get, unlovable? To get ten dollars off your first Fab Fit Fun box, and then huh. um, we'll see what happens. With care. Oh, we forgot to play the theme song, didn't we? Uh, Let's play it we're now. all out of order. Let's play it now. <laughs> Just what? It's okay to have a cat. As you called it, quote, is Jam Pat. Jam Pat? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> My room's playing. Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely <laughs> done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Um. So, uh. Get, start talking, I was, asshole. Well, I was about to, I was about to say we're going to Thailand, um, but these guys... These guys Play don't it again? have the right oh, information. Oh, it's playing again. It oh, keeps doing that's it. how we do it. It keeps playing twice. Um, but these guys, these the only the, podcast that plays the intro twice. The little dum dum clubs have not I don't know, updated their website or something. Go oh, to events. That must be it. That must be it. Go to events. Oh, You're an is. event. You're an event. Um, so anyway, we'll be uh, in Thailand in uh, June. June in yeah. uh, Koh Samui. I've been there. Koh you have been to Koh Samui? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it great? It's great. Yeah, it's a great little beach. Uh, Island. Yeah. How long did you stay there? There you go. Uh, five days. Wow. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. And and you were fine staying there five days? When you were you? there, how much of a clamor was there for a podcast festival? <laughs> 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 so basically, it's going to be us and the Little Dumb Dumb Club. You can go to- uh, little 13th du- through the 18th. LittleDumbDumbClub.com uh, slash Kosamoy, which is K-O-H-S-A-M-U-I. Um, I think you just I think you just need to get it's a hundred bucks for tickets and then um, you get uh, you get uh, a code that you can get a little cheap off the you off get a the cheap hotel yeah. action yeah as it's called uh, 13th through 18th in June so there'll be stand up there'll be a little dumb dumb club podcast um, we'll do a podcast uh, yeah, so it'll it's gonna be a lot of stuff yeah. um, a lot of a lot of like Nick Cody went last year and and um, no but like a good time yeah Good time had by all. Uh, so that's who fun. wouldn't want to go take a vacation with a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> hey, come vacation with a podcast, and then uh, and then uh, you know go to uh, dollop uh, dollopodcast uh, dot com and you can check out um, all of our uh, tour dates: uh, San Francisco, uh, Portland, Indianapolis, Indianapolis. We we added a second show in Indianapolis. We oh, we added, did. Okay, yeah. Kansas City. Uh, we did not add a second Seattle. show. Seattle, uh, Seattle, Portland, San Portland. Francisco, Indianapolis. Second shows. Okay. Uh, I love you. Love you too, man. And I will see you later. Mm, probably should do this podcast. You keep not shutting up about. Now, Dave, this is a small up. Small up. November 17th, 1876. Okay. We haven't done a small up in a while. Yeah, we're rusty. Um, Rutherford Nephew. What? <laughs> I'm Mr. Nephew. I'm Dr. Uncle. Was born in the District of Columbia. Okay. Uh, he uh, was named after Rutherford B. Hayes, who at the time of his birth, of, of Rutherford nephew's birth was waiting to find out the results of the presidential election. So sorry, but wait, Rutherford election. B. Hayes was his uncle? No, he was just named after him. You just think it was his uncle because his last name is nephew. Uh, They're how not am I related. Already confused, and we're under two sentences because, fully in. because his name is so fucked up. Uh, They're name, not related. His name again? Rutherford nephew. Uh, He's aimed after Rutherford B. Hayes, president. Okay. To be, yeah. 
who's his dad's it brother. didn't start well for gotcha. a guy with your brain well i mean you know and then if you add in that drug use in high school and college it just sort of uh-oh dave's losing the hoodie uh, his yeah. uh, his parents were French Canadian. Uh, Rufus had two brothers and two sisters. Rufus did. Uh, sorry, Rutherford. Oh, gee, buddy, Rufus. you just got me to handle what's happening. Um, his father had found uh, had uh, gone into the Civil War in the Vermont Volunteers, so he was up in Vermont, I guess, and he jumped into the war with those boys. Rutherford uncles father rutherford nephew's dad rutherford nephew's dad right shit i didn't think this would be much as a problem as it clearly is going to be uh sorry so during the war he was uh protecting uh dc with with the in the battle there and ended up uh with a very serious lung disorder i couldn't figure out what it was but i assume he got after <laughs> He was in. Can we get anything? Could you you uh, invent something? No, I guess you know, I bet he he was probably near uh, a fire uh, smoke situation. Uh, and breathed it in, and that'll yeah, that'll mess up your black lungs. lung, uh, sad lung. Hmm. Uh, so after he's in and out of hospitals around D.C. for years, the family stayed in D.C. after the war, but not going well. The marriage ends before Rutherford's born. Right? Okay, sure. So uh, when Rutherford's eight months old, he was baptized, um, but St. Joseph's Catholic Church screwed up. And accidentally, we, it's, we did Church of Satan. And <laughs> accidentally, uh, baptized him Rufus nephew. Okay, so that's that's why you're, I said Rufus. Okay, so, Rufus Rufus nephew. So he's baptized Rufus nephew accidentally. Well, it would just be so crazy for us to go to God and see if he could undo that. <laughs> do you mind if he just sticks with Rufus? I apologize. What do you mean his name's Rutherford? Um. So they it just it kind of stuck. Sure, um, as it does. His dad's health kept deteriorating, and then his dad died on February 22nd, 1881. Rufus was just four and a half years old. Okay. So not much is known about the life of young Rufus. At some point in the early 1890s, his mom moved the family to Chicago. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't sound like Rufus was with her uh, because records of his life in Arizona start to pop up at that point. Okay. He also had a new name. <laughs> well, um, okay. Totally Second understand. Second new name. Totally was fucking Was it Rutherford? <laughs> T- so understandable. Yeah. The most understandable name change in the history of people. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he is now going by Jim Thomas. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the other route. He's a teenager at the time, so people I- in Arizona start JT. calling him Kid Thomas. Interesting tweak. Sure. Sure. Kid Thomas. Yeah. Uh, that didn't last long, though. Uh, Jim explained how his new nickname came to be. Quote, I used to like tobacco right well. And when I was just a kid, I lit into the camp of the hash knife outfit in northern Arizona and was going on the roundup for a month. So I just laid in a supply of tobacco, 12 pounds of Climax tied in a gunny sack and a full bar tied to my saddle. Handy as a rifle in deer country. At the end of 25 days, when I had chewed every leaf of that tobacco, there wasn't a puncher in their outfit that wasn't calling me. Climax Jim. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay, Climax. Let's back up a little here. Okay, so he got a big thing. That's the thing of chewing tobacco that he got. So he got a huge brick of chewing tobacco. And because he chewed so much of it, his nickname was Climax? Yeah, because that's the name of the the chewing tobacco, Climax. 25 pounds of it. He chewed chewed 25 25 pounds of tobacco. That's, oh, no, sorry, 12. Okay, 12. Oh. Still, still insane. Still. Insane. Way too much tobacco. Yeah. Like he's showing off at that point. Well, they named him after the brand. <laughs> he wasn't named after it until after he did it all. Here's, here's also a bunch of stuff, Climax stuff. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. So he now he's known as Climax Jim. <laughs> when Jim was just- Climax Plug? Uh-oh. One of them was called Climax Plug. Oh, that's for something else. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, that's a she's wearing a hot little outfit. Well, back then, you know, you could draw women wearing anything. <laughs> when Jim was just seventeen, he was arrested for selling a dozen stolen cows to a slaughterhouse. Okay, um, but the Adobe Jail had a flaw. The Adobe Jail? Yeah. W- you, what was the flaw? You... <laughs> Water made a hole. <laughs> um, 
So that night, Jim was able to dig out using a pocket knife. So, okay, so he seriously is in an Adobe. How did he do it? Well, he cut through the walls like all the other guys, sir. Uh, just a few months later, on July 4th. That's eight, him? 18, yeah. On 18, July 4th, 1894, he stole a horse. Okay. There he is. Sure. Um, but County Sheriff John Rimrock Thompson, everyone's got a nickname. Okay. Uh, caught up uh, with Jim in Pleasant Valley and started the journey. You Rufus uncles, I'm Rimrock. <laughs> started the journey to take Jim uh, to the jail in Globe, which oh, I assume God. is a city. What is happening? It's terrible things. Okay. Taking more than a day, uh, they camped for the night. Sheriff Thompson chained uh, Climax Jim to a post. Okay. Not a good move. Jim broke a link in the chain and took off on foot. Okay. The next morning, Sheriff Thompson set about hunting Jim down, which took a while. He was captured a few miles away, and this time, taken all the way to jail. Okay. What was this jail made out of ice? Well, Jim, Climax Jim was stuck in the jail for a couple of months until he got his hand on a spoon and used it to remove the mortar from around enough bricks to make a big hole to crawl through. Wow. <laughs> Again, the luxury of first. They don't, they don't make them like that anymore. No, man. That was when you could spoon out of a jail. I mean, truly, that was like before they were like, oh, no. Don't give him a spoon. Oh, bugger. Um, so locals there gave him the nickname the Spoon Kid. Uh, wait, okay. So we have, <laughs> we call him Climax Spoony Uncle. Nephew. Shit. Uh, so off Jim, off, off Jim goes. He escapes. Uh, he stole a horse to make his getaway. He rode the horse hard until it gave out and then he stole another horse and kept riding climax rode the horse hard that's right gotcha he was caught uh just before he got to benson for the horse stealing and the escape he was sentenced to one year in prison he did not escape from yuma territorial prison and served his entire time okay that's right the day he was Making released me with his damn hands that's right the day he was released he walked out to discover a sheriff was waiting to take him to jail. How you for, doing? You're under arrest again. For previously stealing a horse on an Indian reservation. Okay. This time he was sentenced to six months in the Penal County Jail, and he was released in 1896. Now, Climax Jim managed to steer clear of the law for two years okay. until June 1898 when Deputy Joe Bargeman arrested him for stealing cattle. Okay, so he's got a pattern. The sheriff took him to St. John's Jail... That didn't last long. While the deputy and another man were eating dinner, Jim picked the lock on the cell door, stole the deputy's horse, and rode off. Good Lord. So they are just... He's the fucking peak best. Peak incompetence. He's the best. But that's amazing. Well, he picked a lock. That's pretty good. Still, who, who thinks he's going to pick a dude, lock? Dude, come on. With the dinner? This is like... I mean, this is movie stuff. Again, it's first. This is movie stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clima, uh, Clamas Jim had a reputation as a lock picker. After he was locked in a cell, he would tell the sheriff that he planned to bust out before morning. What? And the next morning, he would be gone. Damn it! One time, he picked a lock, sat in the sheriff's chair, and smiled at the lawman when he showed up for work the next morning. <laughs> well, how do I told you? <laughs> yeah. They don't call me Climax Jim for nothing. <laughs> also, I came on the chair. So then, well, Climax? Oh, wait. Yep. Makes sense. Hello. <laughs> Well, you're rooming with Orgasmorny. Oh, good Lord. Oh, boy. Uh, so Jim was now getting famous for all his escapes. One newspaper wrote, quote, Climax Jim is easily the most slippery jailbird in the Southwest. Another wrote, it is an old saying that the third time is the charm, but Climax... By the way, it, that's not the saying. That's not. The third time is the charm. <laughs> you know how they say it. <laughs> That early bird, well, he's most likely catching that one. <laughs> the third time is the charm, gentlemen. Well, you're reading extra words paper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so smooth. It is an old saying that the third time is the charm, <laughs> but Climax has been arrested and tried about 47 times, and he has always succeeded in getting in the clear. Okay. Um, Climax Jim was getting so well-known in the area that he had business cards wow. made. Wow. What? It just says, a, it's just a P.O. box, Clifton, Arizona. Who's trying to get in touch with him besides authority? Uh, Rufus Nephew, he's going with his official. Rufus Nephew? He's going with his official. Climax Jim. 
<laughs> so the idea with the P.O. box is just fan mail, I guess? I don't know exactly what that is well, what for. are you handing your card out for if your whole thing Every, is getting out of jail? Everything I read was like, I don't know why you'd have a business card. Uh, okay. But maybe he just, you know, you know, you, you do a job, you hand someone your card. Or maybe when you break out of jail, you leave your card. Love that. Love that move. Right, man. fan of that. Um... On New Year's Day... If you'd like to blow me in person, meet me at P.O. Box. If you'd like to blow me in person? P.O. Box 818. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh... Oh, I lost my place. Oh, boy. Stall. Stall. Uh, Stall. You know, uh, Dave, I think if, uh, you know... Um, you know what's uh, funny nowadays is, um... Uh-huh. You know what I – here's something funny. Uh, you know, the other day I was in a lift. You ever been in one of these? Uh-huh. These guys, this guy, he's not from here. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm talking to the guy, yeah. and uh, and the guy's talking to me, Yeah. and uh, he's not from here. Uh-huh. And uh, we're talking. Uh-huh. And um, – Okay, I got it. Okay. We're good. Oh. That was great. That was great. <laughs> yeah. You're what's known as an improv genius. Well, they, they, call, they call me Riffus for a reason. They call you improv uh, Jim. That's the reason they call... On New Year's Day, 18... Oh, wait! Uh, the uh, 12 items or less checkout line. Boy, they're not enforcing that, are they? <laughs> okay, go ahead, scamp. On New Year's Day, 1899, Jim was arrested for burning brands. Burning brands, so meaning that's he's when, branding other people's yeah, cattle? Yeah, so he steals uh, he steals cattle, and then he, he changes the brand so it looks like his brand. Probably a really fun process for the cows. Double branding? Uh, they're usually the second brand. They're like, I didn't want to be in the fraternity. Yeah. No, rebrand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I never wanted to join Alpha, Alpha, Alpha. And there's a, a rebranding. Yeah, a that's rebranding fun. sucks. Uh, original branding, also not that great. No. That's what um, Spike TV just went through. Go ahead, keep it. <laughs> <Wow, dude. laughs> Took me a minute. Uh, so he's 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 you know rebranding. Um, he gets caught. Lasts about six weeks in jail before he and three other convicts escaped on foot. Uh, they kick through the walls. Didn't say how they got out. Okay, I'm gonna go lockpick. Um, they were caught a few days later. Uh, three weeks later, the local blacksmith was called to put Jim in Jim in leg shackles. Okay. Uh, two days after that, one of the jailers noticed that the leg shackles were broken. Don't touch it. I love you. Um, that the leg shackles. For the listeners, that's going to sound a little crazy. That the leg shackles were broken. Okay. Um, so before he did anything, he so he calls the blacksmith to come back to fix them. But before the blacksmith get there, gets there, Jim climbs over the wall and escapes. Sorry, so he had them on. So a a, a blacksmith comes and puts shackles on shackles him. Leg shackles, right? Yeah. And then two days later, the jailer calls. sees that the leg shackles are broken. Right. So he calls for the blacksmith to come back and fix them. Within that time, he jumps the fence. But he jumps the fence okay. and run. But um, they had a guy waiting on the other side of the wall. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> Smart. Finally. So he was but arrested. But did he break the leg shackles? Is that uh, what Yeah, happened? he must have. And then so he's just keeping them on to be like, I'm yeah. waiting for my turn. <laughs> yeah, he okay. must have. So they caught him uh, a few minutes later. Sure. Still, good run. Yeah. Um, a friend posts bail for him uh, this time. So he gets out and immediately steals some cattle from a cattle company. He's got a bit of a problem. The cattle were unguarded at the time. He just saw a bunch of cows out there. <laughs> oh, man. So he said he was just being friendly yeah. and hurting the cows until the new owner was Boy, found. Boy, <laughs> this is like if there was a cops, this would have been on cops back then. <laughs> Sir, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, officer, it's not what it looks like. No, no, no. I'm just herding these five cattle because I couldn't find their owner. That's the equivalent of, well, no, my buddy just lost his keys and said that if I jump-started it, then I could take it. Well, I don't remember my buddy's name. Um, is that him? Yeah, it's him around this time. He looks like he. That's a pretty is great shot. Dave Grohl. Yeah, he looks. One of the Foo Fighters. Um. So. Uh. So he's cruising around with uh, these cows. Apparently, he just keeps going looking for this owner because pretty soon he's herded them all the way to New Mexico. Still well, can't far find, away from still the owner. Can't find the owners. Is he calling them? He's whole looking. Time? He's, well, you can't call. Who are you gonna call? You just got to run around going. Did anybody know these cows? Anybody? Did these look familiar to anybody? Uh, I'm starting to think I'm gonna have to have them. 
when he got to New Mexico, he formed the Star Bar Circle Cattle Company. He was president, uh, superintendent, range boss, wrangler, round cookup, and the board of directors. Sure. Okay. So he handled a lot of the business. How did he work with himself? Well, <laughs> yeah, he okay, was really good. good. He made a lot of good meals for himself. Okay. Sometimes good. there's a little bit of yelling. Sure. Um, we have another birthday in the office. But the range boss of the actual cattle company he took them from uh, was following on the trail of the missing cows. He also, knowing who Climax Jim was, notified uh, the sheriff in Apache County to look for Climax Jim. Okay. Who was arrested and taken back to Arizona. Oh, boy. Okay. Now, you should see one he's of He's a bit of a troubled youth. Um, he's not great. He's got some issues. So this is the this is one of the jails that he was in. Oh, it's nice that they uh, labeled it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, yeah I mean, I feel like I could break out of this It looks like he's got holes in it Yeah, like a lot uh, So so he's taken back to Arizona Apparently, he, Climax Gym smelled quite bad uh, Because the lawman decided he needed a bath Great Oh, uh, this better be a tactic So he had his clothes taken off And he was given a bar of soap and a brush And then they put him in a horse trough Okay, sure, as one does Now, next to a horse trough, there was a horse but he d- <laughs> so naked climax Jim jumped on and just galloped off. <laughs> wow, shit! <laughs> when you watch him, well, our biggest mistake was assuming he wouldn't do this nude. Now, how the fuck does that not hurt? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. My balls, my balls, my balls, my balls, my balls, my balls. Is a man named Climax saying my balls <laughs> on a stolen horse through town? <laughs> yes, he's naked. Yes, he's naked. Uh, it is said that he rode through two towns completely naked. Okay. So pr- clothes are not a priority. I mean, he's hitting the ground like a Terminator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't need any yeah. of that shit. Nude, figure out clothes later. Uh, he's arrested again later that year. So he was on the lamb for a while with that shit. He was on the horse for a while, too. Um, this time he went to trial. Sure. Uh, here's the courthouse. It's always fun. Is it just going to be labeled like shit. another kid's town adventure? Courthouse. It looks like a courthouse. Sure. Uh, so uh, he uh, he produces witnesses who swore the crime had been committed in Apache County. Okay. And he was acquitted. And then he was immediately arrested in Apache County for stealing the same cattle. Okay. So. So then Jim, Jim produced witnesses who swore the still crime up. had been committed in Graham County, and he was acquitted. Wow. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> He's the fucking best. Uh, in 1902, he showed off his safe cracking abilities when a Clifton storekeeper ordered a burglar proof safe. That's where he lives, right? Climax Jim happened to be there when the safe arrived, so he started fiddling with the dial. A crowd gathered, and after 30 minutes, he opened the door. Wow. So he's fucking got some game. How is he doing it? I, I just think he's one of those guys. Just he has smart. a skill, uh, he makes shit happen. This is, he, he's starting to look pretty sweet. He oh, he looks a little bit like, uh, what's his name, uh, Sam Elliott. Yeah, well, he's got the mustache. Well, I mean, uh, really, when you say someone looks like Sam Elliott, aren't you just saying they have a big, bushy mustache? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> they look good in a hat and have a big, bushy mustache. Uh, Climax Jim continued getting arrested and escaping for years. In 1907, he was on trial for uh, altering a check. Okay. During the trial, the lawyers got into a rather intense argument. While everyone was focused on the argument, Jim wandered over and picked up the check from the prosecutor's desk and put it in his mouth because he already had a big wad of chewing tobacco. Okay. So he just shoved it in so everyone, no one noticed because the argument was going on. S- wh- who's arguing? Like wrestlers? The lawyers. The lawyers are yelling at each other. And he walks over to evidence and puts the check in his tobacco mouth. And what's on the prosecutor's table, so he just grabs it and crams it in his mouth. This might just be a case of either he's invisible or confident. After order was restored to the court, the trial continued. Yeah, where, the, where, where the hell's that check? At some point, the judge asked to see the evidence. I'd like to see this check, please. But no one could find it. Jim, do you have it? Jim just sat there chewing his tobacco slash evidence. <laughs> And he was found not guilty due to a lack of evidence. Okie dokie. Okay. Legend was it that as he left the courtroom, he spit the check into the judge's spittoon. Nice. I don't believe that. That's what you take issue with? Yeah. Dude ate a check. You're worried about where he spit it? Jim had a uh, a longtime lady friend. Sure. 
Right. Uh, and they married in 1907. Her name was Virginia Gonzalez. Okay. The marriage was briefly deva- delayed when he was arrested and, and then escaped. <laughs> sure. Well, he had a marriage to get to. Uh, marriage did not last long. They were soon divorced, and he was on his way to his next wife. Hey, how long until he was saying, I want to go back to jail, and I'm not talking about that marriage? Hello! <laughs> And he married a relative named Gertrude Nephew. He married a relative also named Nephew? (laughs) The nephews were relatives? That sounds obvious. Uh, How is he related to her? uh, I don't know. It must be cousin or something. (laughs) I'd like you to meet the nephews. They're cousins. I mean, you could marry a cousin back then. I don't know if you, I bet some places you still can, but you Oh, you, you can, can totally. no, believe me, I've Googled it a bunch. You can marry cousins. <laughs> I think there's seven states where you can still do a cousin marriage. Yeah, I'm always Googling that. Yeah. Um, they got married in 1910 and had a son, Stanley. Uh, Stanley was not healthy. They moved to San Diego and had two daughters. So Jim got out of the, when he had kids and a wife, he got he out of up. the, he hung up the, the crime business okay. and, he, and he got into the well digging business. Okay. Um, and then in September 1921, he was digging a well, and it had collapsed, and he died. Oh, jeez. He should have stuck to crime. Jesus. So this dude is just the first hacker. Uh, okay. Don't okay me. Don't, <laughs> don't placate me. I hate being placated. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you want to see his grave? Here's sure, his grave I've always style. wanted to see his grave. There's his gravestone. What is it in? Rubus looks like nephew. it's Russian, it's so old. Yeah, it's all old. and. Wow. It's even got a little piece chipped out of it where he was probably trying to dig out of the grave. Yeah. Break One last breakout. Oop, did I do that? Oh, yep. boy. Anyway, he didn't make it. That's a, that's a, fun, that's a nice, fun little small up, Dave. Thank you. Fun little small up for the people. 40. Forty, hmm. but in those years, what? Oh, I guess 1921. But what's, what's the life expectancy back then? It's got to be more than. Uh, it's got to be more than 45. Ma- maybe it isn't though. I mean, I bet it's more than that, but not by much. In the 1920s, yeah, you got to have another 10 or 15. I'd say 55, there. 55, 60. I mean, it's before Social Security, so people are uh, just eating their own feet to live at that well, age. Well, in five years, we'll be back. Oh yeah, we're heading Boom. right back there because we got to get rid of that. Cause yeah. It's, that's not helping people at all. Uh oh. <laughs> I let daddy's fuse again. <laughs> it's so easy to do. I just got to go a little negative and you'll be like, let's party. Uh, all right. Uh, you can uh, follow Gareth on uh, Twitter, Reynolds Gareth. Uh, we and have, Instagram. Uh, we have a do- the dollop uh, on Instagram. Yep. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Dave underscore Anthony underscore. Dollop uh, podcast, show dates. Dollop podcast, uh, that's our dot com. And then we're on Facebook. We have a, a subreddit, the dollop, uh, all that stuff. People talk in there about stuff. And some, sure. Sometimes I ban them. Sure. Uh, as, you're, as you're ought to do, David. Yep. Don't talk shit. All right. Good night. We signed jars. What? <laughs>